Brussels. Now, it's been called the world's largest democratic exercise. The elections in India begin in just a couple of hours from now. 900 million people are eligible to vote in around 1 million polling stations. Now, the election itself is held in seven phases and results will only be announced on May the 23rd. Well, with me now to uh, take a look at this is James Crabtree. He's the Associate Professor of Practice at Lee Kuan Yew School of Public Policy and author of The Billionaire Raj. You've spent a lot of time there, James. Uh, a huge election. We know it is the world's biggest election ever. How do you think it'll go? Well, so last time around, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi won a thumping victory. This time he's up against it. The opposition is a bit more organized. His economic record isn't so good, but the polls still suggest he's probably going to come back as, uh, as PM. But he, uh, you know, he, has a, he has a struggle on his hand this time. Yeah, and we take a look at those big issues because you've got the economy, uh, jobs in particular, unemployment rate at its lowest since the early 70s. You've got the rural economy. You've got lots of issues around corruption as well. So how are the parties dealing with these huge issues? Yeah, I think you put your finger on the three big issues. So India's rural economy has struggled. There's been droughts. Farmers are suffering. There aren't enough jobs for the tens of millions of India's young people who enter the, poll, enter the workforce every year and the opposition has been hammering Modi on corruption. So those are the reasons why he's weakened, but he's still very popular. People like him. Uh, he speaks well on the stump. He's charismatic. Uh, he's a nationalist. He stands up to Pakistan. Um, and so there's a sense that despite the fact that he's being criticized for not delivering as much as he promised, that people still like him, and that's probably going to be enough for him to squeak home. And we know fake news is a huge issue in this election. Um, of course, leaders like Narendra Modi is very good on social media. But tell us about that element of, of this election. So India's online population is now half a billion or more. And so that's a huge change since last time around. And so just as in the American election and others, there's an enormous amount of pressure on the social media companies on Facebook and WhatsApp and Twitter because the parties, as they begin the election today over the next six weeks, are going to unleash a tide of claims about, you know, their records and each other and so there's real scrutiny on these global social media platforms uh, to see if they can cope with the fake news that this election is mm -hmm. going to bring and I think the suspicion is that they won't be able to. All right now taking a look at some of the other issues because we've got these big economic manifestos as well that uh, Prime Minister Modi has made he's uh, very confidently said that India will be the third largest economy by 2030 on the Congress side you've got this minimum income uh, scheme which essentially guarantees a minimum income for India's poor. So what do you make of all of these promises? They're offering a lot of carrots, aren't they? Yeah, the tone of the election so far has been nationalism and giveaways. So Modi, in the aftermath of the skirmish between India and Pakistan, has been talking to his base. He needs to get his core vote out if he's going to win. And both parties have been trading spending pledges. So the Congress offering a minimum income guarantee to all poor people and Modi offering a similar thing to farmers. And so that's how they're going to fight this campaign. They're going to try and get their base out. Mm -hmm. They're going to try and um, appeal to voters with carrots, as you say. Yeah, and lots of other issues like the religious polarization, those tensions with Pakistan as well. But unfortunately, we've run out of time. But thank you for coming in and talking to us, James Crabtree.